what is delta time? Well, according to Google, it's a change in time. But what is in Roblox? Well, it's actually the same thing, a change in time. But what does that even mean? And change in time and what? Like, how could this be used? Why should I learn this? But before we even get to any of that, we need to go over the time in between. What is delta time? What does it go over? And what is the change in time about? Well, delta time is a change in time between every frame that is rendered. So delta time is the time before every frame. So a frame is rendered and there is time between the next frame that is rendered. And the time in between those two frames is called the delta time. So the bigger the delta time, the slower game will be because it is not being rendered as quickly. And the lower the delta time, the faster your game is. Well. How do you actually get delta time? We get delta time in a script, but it's not like everything else in Roblox Studio. We don't get delta time by just saying game like a built-in function. And we also don't get delta time by something like underscore G, like a global variable. We don't get delta time by doing these things. So how else are we supposed to get it? Well, we get delta time in the service run service because run service deals with time management the task scheduler and all of the back-end frame stuff that roblox has for developers but once again we don't just say run service dot delta time and we get it we get it in run services events events like heartbeat give us delta time and also uh run service events like if we copy this heartbeat there's render step render step gives us um delta time and also uh step two also gives us delta time and you're probably wondering how can we get delta time from something like this well if we go to these parentheses in the function we will see that there is a delta time number so Delta time returns us the number once again, and in here is where we can put in the delta time, and we can get it through these events. To shorten delta time, I'm just going to put in dt, and type check it as a number. So there is our delta time. We have now gotten it. And so how we can actually view this is by saying print our delta time. Head into your game with this running, and we have a whole bunch of numbers being printed to our output every single second. Alright, and this is because run service fires every frame, so we are getting this all the time. And if I just scroll up so it just stops for a second, we have all of these small numbers that is our delta time. Extremely small numbers, right? So that means our game is running fast. Right, because this is pretty much a blank game, so there's not much like weighing down the game from being ran fast. So these are like very small numbers. And this is our delta time, and it shows us the time between every frame. It's a very small number. Um, so yeah, this is our delta time. Very cool. Now, off the top of my head, I couldn't really think of any actual use cases that you would use this for any features that you are coding in your game, but I can think of a reason why you would use this. And by the way, guys, if you want to use Delta Time for stuff like debounces and maybe clocks even, but I probably even want to use Delta Time. Depends on the scenario, but there are, those are some maybes, some ifs for using Delta Time. But one for sure thing you can do with Delta Time is by benchmarking your code to see how fast it is running. And how we can benchmark our code is say we have some code here and we will say so we can get a start um, which will be os.clock and then we could have a Delta Time variable which will be os.clock minus starts now you know delta time doesn't just have to be uh the amount of time between each frame as i showed earlier delta time can also be a, a difference in time a time between two things so you can also use this os.clock method as a form of delta time you don't just have to get it in a run service event 
And so we can just have a task.wait, and I have a, a random here so that it waits uh, between 1 and 5 seconds, so it'll give us a random number. So we can just use a wait, and we'll just see what this gives us. So run, and let's see what this gives us. Uh, maybe. I don't think I, I don't think I printed our delta time. Yeah, I didn't. So print delta time, and then run. It's going to wait a few amount of seconds. And there we go. So we got 4.01 and all this. So that is how long it took uh, to get from start of the script to down here. Now, hopefully you don't get this number for a delta time four seconds between something. Like, that is extremely slow if you're talking about back-end stuff. Um, but that's just an example. So let's say we have a for loop. So 4i is equal to 1, 50 do and we are going to i'm not going to do this okay so we are going to maybe print maybe not i'm just going to test out wait this so there is a wait in this and then we're going to see how long this takes so running this in your game we're out of a loop that runs 50 times with a test out wait in there how long will this take this will take us 1.4 seven seconds and now we can keep experimenting with this so we can see maybe how long it takes to destroy uh the base plate workspace dot base plate destroy maybe how long it takes to print yeah yay over and over again maybe we can see how long it takes to get the amount of children in the workspace so number of game dot workspace you get children you know, we're just going to see how long these three things take us. So upon running the game, our base plate will be gone. And we have our yay over and over again. And it takes us not very long. A very short amount of time because code runs very fast. You're going to have to have something wrong with your code. Or just bad code in general for this to be a not very fast process. So that's why even computers can run multiple scripts with hundreds of lines of code within milliseconds so you know obviously it wouldn't take very long for these three things but that's just an, an again another example so to again go over delta time is time between two things um like a frame like frames being rendered delta time can be uh the time between two frames that are being rendered uh, delta time between two things on another scenario uh, so a difference in time between two things and it can be used to benchmark your code and possibly some other things that I could have searched up as well but you guys can do that if you are really interested in this and yeah guys that was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.